Hey guys, uh, let's make the sonic screwdriver from Doctor Who. And uh, here it is. I found some uh, reference. A lot of it is not actually accurate. It's from toys that are made pretty badly. And um, yeah, so we'll have to uh, look at some other reference to figure out what's what. I think this is the real one, maybe, or the closest one I could find uh, to the real one. Uh, so. Uh, let's just get going. Uh, first things, first thing we need to do is actually do the simple things, and the simple things are like you know these little rings. So we can do that with just with a simple cube. Actually, not a cube. I'm sorry, a cylinder. And let's keep it at uh, something that we'll keep using. So let's see. There's four. Let's try let's do 32. I think that should be good. Right, that part's done. To make this handle, we'll make a cylinder, subdivision 32, and 8 goes into 32 four times. And that's important for us because we need to make sure that we understand that we have to make... We have to reserve four of these sub uh, these faces for each uh, dimple. All right, that looks great. So let's just isolate this for a second because we need to just extrude some edges here. Extrude. And that's enough. it all right so that part's done so I'm gonna use just the EP curve tool All right, so the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna use a revolve. So the first thing we need to do is select all of the curves into modify, freeze, and then reset. So they're all at origin. Then I'm gonna start selecting each one and then 
using a Revolve, which is this guy. And if we just do it, you see it makes a NURBS surface. We don't want that. We want to go straight to polygons. We want to go general quads. I'm going to set this to um, isoparms, isoparms, click apply. Right? And you can see what that gives us. Now, the thing is, I don't want that number. I want actually four in the wrong direction. This way. There. So, by putting four there, it's going to match 32 divisions. And this one, for this one, we'll do three. Yep. This one, one. Now, we're actually going to use the wedge tool, which I don't use often, but when I do have to use it, it's great. So first we need to fill this in. And I'm going to select the spaces here. Set this to multi and then shift select this edge in the middle and then go to wedge wedge face like that and I have to select selected wedge face there so you see what it did is it made a, a wedge now we have divisions, angles, like that. Alright, so now we just need to get rid of all this extra geo here. See those little hangy thingies? Gone. Get rid of that. Thank you. 
Good. Let's bring back the cap here and the other cylinder. Good, very happy with that. 
All right, so we can uh, keep working on the rest. Okay, so now let's make uh, this piece. And uh, I can see that it's leather. Now we have a stitch back here. All right. And so from the reference that I found, there's a button here. This is all fake and wrong. I don't know what that is. Um, that's not right either. The real button is actually here, and it's like a metal square with a little round button. So I'll have to cut that out. And uh, let's make this quick. So I'm gonna start with the cylinder. And since uh, we start with a 32 subdivision cylinder, we'll just keep that. Okay, so now we just need to place them. And for that, we'll use a lattice. Alright, so let's add some divisions. start out just by lining up the points like this and then tweaking it after. If you match the normals of the surface, it will give you a better result. And I'm gonna show you a quick trick for creating uh, UVs on a tube like this. It's very easy. First thing we need to do is we need to um, do an automatic map just to get some UVs there, like that. So I'm gonna select all the faces on this piece. I'm gonna go into uh, polygons, go to unitize, and just do that. And what this does is it takes every face and places it right in the center of each um, of the top of the 
our UV uh, grid and it fills up the whole uh, 0 to 1 space and now all we need to do is pick a seam which is this and then shift select so now we have every edge selected except this seam and then all we need to do is click move and sew polygons move and sew then if we zoom out there it is those are our UVs and we can look at the checkerboard see what that looks like and then to make this a little more even what we can do turn off the checker is in here we'll go into Polygons, unfold, and I'm going to set this to legacy and set this to horizontal. I want to unfold horizontally but not vertically and then click apply. And it will do that. And then if you want to be a little more, if you want to be even more um, exact, what we can do is just select each row and do this and then we can come back in here and click normalize and if we look at the checkerboard now you can see what that looks like it's nice and even throughout then all we need to do is transfer the UVs using transfer maps to go from or sorry transfer components so from here to here see those are messed up I'm gonna go into uh, where is it mesh transfer attributes and set this to component click apply and you can see it's gonna transfer All right, now let's make that button. Let's see what it looks like. So, button is square. This is a little round part, and it looks like a I'm make a cube. So that's the center. It's about that big. Freeze, reset. Okay. Alright, so we can see where it goes. It's here. So it looks like that.
Combine and then just select around the area that covers the vertices that we need to connect and just click merge. It will merge those vertices. We can then soften and then press 3 and check. There it is. So there's our button, there's our stitch. That part's done. And the other thing we can do is that see there's a, a gap that we see there. So that's an easy fix. I'm just going to make a cube. Place here like so. Just scale it. Place it just beyond like that. Just enough so that it covers. Make sure it's centered. And also make sure it doesn't go through anything. It doesn't. Select that cube again. And then delete the face that's facing us. And then invert the normals. That way, when we're looking at it, we're looking at the front of it. And the other thing I like to do is add a bevel. Just like this. That way, if we subdivide it by accident, it doesn't collapse into a circle. It doesn't add too much geo, but then we can select everything and press 3 on it to subdivide. And you can see it's not going to collapse into nothing. There. Let's use a cylinder for this. 32. Now, if you want to bring some of these surfaces closer together, of course we can use a lattice for that. So we can select this, put a lattice, and then you make, you add divisions like that, and then select like this part here, and just move it up. Maybe this one as well. Thank you. 
show you how to <clears throat> close this off uh, because I don't like to keep it open like that so I'll quickly show you my process for this uh, I don't like the loops going up there's no reason for that oh. we forgot to combine to clean this up is that I don't want to have all this extra gel going all the way up so we can use the multi cut tool and just make a little triangle here like this and then the same on the other side and then just select it should be select on the other side too and hit control delete and that's done now if you want to be really clean about this we can go even a step further because these loops are adding a lot of extra uh, geometry we can get rid of them as well and to do that we can add a loop if you go up like this add one here like that same on this side, and same thing. So we have less geo there. See, it looks nice and clean. And what you can also do. this out like that make it even with this edge like 
Alright, that looks really good. So because of the 32 subdivision uh, so, uh, torus, it should be easy to quad. I'm going to go from the middle here, and then it's 1, 2, 3, so 1, 2, 3, there, like that. Perfect. Right, let's go combine these two. 